This video is going to show the steps in the repair and the restoration of a Hammond Tripoli calendar clock. I received it in a non-working condition and I don't know if it's not working because of the frayed wiring. I can actually see some of the metal of the wire showing through here which makes me reluctant to plug it in to see if it's going to work or if it has a frozen rotor which is pretty common with these old Hammond clocks. This was built sometime in the 1930s. This particular model also happens to be an alarm clock. So this is the lever here to put the alarm on and off. And I've seen pictures of this clock to know that what's missing from this knob is just a little dial with the hours so that you can rotate this to what time you want to set your, uh, your clock to. What I also found for this clock is an old advertisement for it. Looks like this. Advertising the fact that it's an electric clock, which was new back then. And it's not only a calendar, but also an alarm clock. Anyway, the first step is going to be to open up the back. And what I'm noticing on other Hammond clocks that I've seen, there's usually three screws holding the back plate on. Just regular flat blade screws. This one, for whatever reason, is sitting with nuts holding the screws. I don't know if that was an original thing or a replacement, but I see that each one has been tightened so much that it's actually broken the metal around the rim here. All three spots, the metal is kind of torn. So the first step, anyway, will be undoing these three nuts and then trying to get the back off. So we'll work on that first. So to loosen the three nuts first. Looks like there's a washer there with it also. And this one, the whole screw came out instead of just the nut. So this is really an unusual design. I don't know what's going on with this one. Huh. Same thing happened here. Most unusual. Well, let's see if we can pry the plate off. There's actually another nut holding this down here. And that brings the whole screw out as well. Wow. There you go. The next step, I think, will be getting the face off. I'll have to look more closely to see how this is held on. Once I figure it out, I'll come back and we'll look to take it off. I haven't figured out how to take the face off yet, but what I did figure out is how to change the day and the date. The knob here, if I turn it all the way to the left and then all the way to the right, it changes the day. If I just turn it a little bit to the left and then to the right, it'll change the date. And I'll show you how that looks. Turning all the way changes each day. Turning just a little bit and I'm just changing the numbers. So that aspect of it seems to be working quite well. Anyway, back to trouble brainstorming how this one comes off. This is one of the most unusual and difficult clocks I've ever tried to take apart. Um, it was really hard to get the case and the bezel from around the clock mechanism. I was told that this is attached with what they call a friction grip, but I could not budge it as if it was supposed to rotate. <clears throat> 
I had to end up going in with a screwdriver and prying the edge of this all around until I was finally able to slip this off. And once I did that, I realized there's a notch here and, there's, and where the little tab is pushed in over here, and you can kind of see it over there. <clears throat> That's supposed to line in this way and then it rotates in, in this slot. But it, it was so tight you couldn't budge it. Anyway, I was able to remove it I then with a pair of pliers had to bend the rim back in so that I could still fit it into the into the frame, into the wood case rather. And the other thing I had discovered in getting it off was that the front plate with all the mechanism that controls the day and the date was almost falling away from the, the rest of the mechanism. And my concern was that I was going to break something, so temporarily I just put some tape to hold this plate snug against the rest of it. The next issue I was faced with that I had not really seen before is every other clock I fixed, the second hand would come off. It's just friction grip, you just pry it up. This particular one I discovered, it's a threaded stem, so I had to rotate it backwards to literally unscrew it. So I'm fortunate that I didn't force it off. Next, I can remove the small nut to take off the rest of the hands. And then the face, the dial. So what I plan to do, my main concern is I'm don't see how I'm going to be able to open up and access all the gears in here, but they do look pretty clean. The biggest issue is the power cord. I definitely see where the metal is exposed here on both, en both ends of it. And I'm going to try to seal those exposed areas up with some epoxy glue because I really can't get in here to try to replace the entire cord, which would be nice probably then tape it up and the rest of the cord seems to be in pretty decent shape except when you get near the plug so I will probably just cut it here and attach a new plug and hope for the best so let me work on that and then we'll come back I covered the exposed area on the wires with some epoxy glue and then just covered each strand of wire with some electrical tape and then together I'll extend the uh, tape all the way to the wire here. And I've also come up with sort of an old school plug, which I'm going to put on the end of the wire. And uh, that should maintain the vintage look of the clock. And once I get that plug attached to the cord, I'll be able to plug it in and see if it's actually working. Because at that point, I'll be confident that there's no exposed wires that might cause uh, a short or anything of the, of the like. I attached the plug to the cord. I've plugged it in and I gave the start knob a spin. And as you can see, it's running. So the next step is going to be to reassemble the face, the hands, into the case. Uh, before doing that, though, I'm going to clean everything up, polish up the rim. I also have some products that will polish up the wood, make it look really nice. I'll show you what those products are in just a moment. For the rim and any other metal parts, I'll use Noxon. That'll bring up a nice shine to it. And for the wood case, this is a striped mahogany veneer, but it has a lot of scratches, a lot of wear. And to blend all of this out and give it a nice shine, what works really well is something called Howard's Restore Finish, which is this. It takes out all those white scratches. It uh, blends everything nicely together. And then for a nice shine, it also make a, it's a wax finish called Feed and Wax. And I'm going to work on that next before reassembling everything. I don't know how much of the assembly I can show you because this clock is so difficult to put back together. But what I do want to show you is how I'm able to synchronize the time to the changing of the day and the day. I've got the hour hand pointing at eight, and what I'm going to do is start turning it until the day changes. Okay. 
Okay, it's starting to change. It was on the four, which is what, and I would like it to start changing at midnight. So I'm going to move the hour hand so I can get it off. and set this at midnight. And then continue to turn it. And it seems to take about almost four hours for it to totally change. So this is where I want the hour hand to be. So now I think I can reset all the hands and put everything back together and hopefully it's going to function correctly. So what I've done is I've cleaned up the dial and the hands. I've reassembled that portion of the clock. Everything's nice and clean here. I polished up the rim, cleaned the glass, and also cleaned up the wood, polished it. It's looking a lot nicer. The next step is going to be to place the rim and the housing back over the clock. I'm sure it's going to take an inordinately amount of time to do that. So I'm going to do it and we'll come back and I'll just show you the results of it being reassembled. I'll try to show you in steps if I can. I've got the wire through the back housing. And when I place the rim over the face, I'm going to line up the notch here with the tab here with this notch here. And once they're together, I'm just gonna try to rotate it. And I think that would give me the tight fit that I'm looking for. I wasn't able to show you how it looked assembled prior to putting it back into the uh, wood frame. Uh, it was so awkward to get it in there that once I had it together, I just wanted to slide it in, which I did, secured the back plate with the three screws, plugged it in, gave it a spin. And happy to say that it is running. So there you go, the Hammond Synchronous Triple E clock, built in the 1930s, also an alarm clock. I don't have any intention of using it as that, but I like that it's a calendar uh, day and date clock. If you've enjoyed the video, uh, definitely check out some of my others. The techniques are pretty much the same in uh, repairing all these clocks, but everyone is a little bit different. Anyway, bye for now.